Good afternoon, folks, people, humans, guys. That is going to be part of our topic for today. If you've ever wondered, why do I hear sometimes people saying guys to each other? And it's a little confusing because not everybody's a guy. Well, what's going on? Well, we're going to talk about that. We're going to also talk about some words and interesting words and phrases for dating because there's a lot of confusion around that. Uh, so, our, so our topic today is boys and girls, kind of around that theme. And we have some other things to talk about too. We'll be covering, uh, let's see, there is something in the news I want to go over. I want to look at an app for memorizing things and see if that works or how well it works. We'll see about that. And uh, then I'll be answering questions as usual. So if you have questions about grammar, culture, idioms, phrases, whatever, ask that in the chat. I'll do my best to get to the questions. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Uh, sometimes I just skip questions for no reason, because I want to. <laughs> But anyway, welcome, and it's great to have you. If you haven't already done so, feel free to sign up for the free course that's in the link in the description, free English course. Uh, there you will learn about conversational English, how to handle things in conversations. It's a pretty, pretty fun and popular course. That's free, 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 free. And of course, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to support me support the channel that would be most appreciated that's something you can do also for free which is very helpful to me all right so thank you for joining again and it's good to see that we have some people joining already we're live on youtube and also facebook uh, so good to see people joining from both places all right uh, what's up? Greetings from Mexico. Greetings from the United States. I mean, the Hudson Valley. It's hot. It's stupid hot. And I don't like it. Um, but I will say that since leaving the city, I've noticed that overall stress has gone down. I wasn't sure what would happen, right? I grew up in the countryside, pretty much near a small town. So surrounded by trees and forests and grass and all of that stuff near a giant dairy farm, actually, uh, with hundreds of cows. So I grew up in that kind of environment. I'm, I'm used to it, but I had kind of forgotten about it because I was basically traveling around the world for a long time and living in other places, living in New York for a while, for a long time. So I wasn't sure what it would be like to move to the countryside. Of course, I was a little concerned that my wife would be uh, not used to it because she's always lived in cities, right? So I didn't know. But what I've noticed is after about six months of living in the countryside, uh, you know, it's very quiet, it's very green, very few cars go by. I've noticed general stress levels going down. Just sitting outside, looking at the clouds in the evening, overall, highly recommended for stress. You don't really notice how much, not that there's anything wrong with cities. I love living in cities too, but you don't really notice how much stuff is constantly being pushed at you in a big city. Advertisements, noise, ambulances, people yelling at each other, uh, uh, people walking up to you on the street and trying to make you donate uh, to save the coconuts or whatever it may be, right? It's just a, there's just a lot of stuff that's always pulling at you. And of course, then if you live in an apartment building like I did, you've got your neighbors, you know, they're, you know that they're right there on the other side of the wall. Even though in the apartment building I lived in, actually, 
the walls were pretty good. There wasn't a lot of noise coming through, uh, except I would hear sometimes, I was trying to, for example, record a course, I would hear the guy upstairs jump in the shower. I guess his shower was right above my studio. And if you go back to the old days with the Nintendo, and he, uh, whenever he would get in the shower, he would go Woo! like that. And then he would, some big weird noises in, he made some weird noises in the shower, I, I have to say. Uh, so that also, I think, is a point of a point of stress, and that's not something I have to deal with right now. I don't have neighbors on three sides, which is great. There's no neighbors to the left, to the right, or behind. I do have a couple neighbors to the front, which which I like, which is good. I, I, that's nice. Um, but also then moving out, the process of moving, the process of working with the bank and all of that stuff. It's also very stressful. We moved in the middle of a blizzard, the worst snow of the year, in at the end of January, right before the Chinese New Year. There were a couple guys willing to willing to do it when no one else was willing to move. But unfortunately, the streets were covered with snow. There were there were I don't know three feet of this much snow in the streets and so i was out in the street with a shovel shoveling 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 and finally the truck got through and we were able to load everything up and and move but it was just several days of a lot of stress and dealing with a lot of uncertainty and then with the whole bank process which is also very complicated there was one unexpected thing that happened that added a lot of stress one part of the process we just needed some little approval basically some guy needing to look at a piece of paper and stamp it and then say oh, i'm done or sign his name but he just wasn't doing it they just weren't doing it and so we didn't know if this there was just an adjusting some number right but we needed that to happen in order to move on so we had furniture scheduled for delivery and uh, the the uh People who were selling us the house or, or the, 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 the agents and stuff, they were giving us pressure, asking, hey, what's going on? Lawyer, the lawyer, the attorney uh, on both sides saying, hey, what's happening? What's going on? What's with the delay? And just not knowing when it was going to happen and everything clicked into place kind of at the last minute. So that was perhaps one of the more stressful few weeks of my definitely I think the most stressful few weeks of my entire life I wasn't processing the stress consciously I wasn't walking around thinking oh geez I'm stressed but I think there was a lot of stress under the surface that I wasn't even aware of because some weird stuff started to happen uh, I woke up one morning and I had giant my arms were red. <laughs> my arms just turned red. Not my entire arms, but on my my forearms, I got these big red spots. And that was just a weird thing. And a bunch of other kind of weird stuff happened. And then after things started settling down, a couple of months after moving, I the stress just started melting away. And just this morning, I was out on the on the back patio with a, with a cup of coffee just enjoying the breeze and i just suddenly realized there what what am i i don't have anything to stress about anymore <laughs> it's amazing i recommend it live in the countryside <laughs> do it well maybe not for everybody it really depends you know it depends but that's uh something i something i realized this morning Oh, great. Joel's here. Hey, mate. Greetings from Zimbabwe. Nice. Armenia. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Alice, thank you for joining. Much appreciated. Hope you're doing well. GB plus long time no see. Poland. I bought a course today on Udemy. English grammar complete. That is a good course to buy. Highly recommend that one. Uh, I'm pretty proud of that course. So check that out. Pablo. Pablo. Uh, hi, <laughs> hello, sir. 
Um, Alejandro has taken the long course. It is a long one, but uh, I think worth it. It's it's really covering a lot of sentence uh, patterns, and I think it's use. I think it's a useful one. If you want to learn all the English sentence patterns, check that one out for sure. It's called English Grammar Complete. I haven't known yet versus I don't know yet. All right, let's kick it off with some questions. Uh, yes, Advocate, I do. Advocate is your name. I do. Um, you can take courses either on, on Udemy, which is a great option. Uh, that is in the link. You just click on if so. If you click on the link in the description that says cloud at cloudenglish.net, uh, that will be to the Udemy courses. The reason that I think it's better to click on those is that uh, I get uh, I get credit, a referral credit on those, right? So Udemy says, oh, okay, these are coming from, from Luke specifically. Whereas if you go to Udemy and search me, Luke Pretty, or, or my courses, then uh, then it's it's different. So I would recommend going through the link in the description. That, that would be great if you're, if you're interested in those. Uh, the first link, though, is for the annual membership, which is different. So anyway, either way, whatever works for you. Dimitri, a little pushy, but yes, I will answer your question. <laughs> I'm try we're trying to just get things started here, Dimitri. Relax, all right? Just a point of, uh, a point of, I think, um, I don't know, courtesy? I mean, everybody's different, I suppose. But if I don't get a question right away and you say, could you answer my question, please? Uh, it's not, I don't think it's going to, well, maybe it will, because here I am answering it. So not my favorite feeling, though. Okay, Dimitri, which one is correct? I haven't known yet, and I don't know yet. The answer is very simple, but it, it reveals a couple of, I think, interesting grammar points. The correct answer is, I don't know yet. Because in this case, knowing is an event, right? If you say, I know that, that's not an event, but I don't know it yet, is suggesting an event that is coming up. What event? Well, that would be the line that marks not knowing it and knowing it. That's the, We think of that as a kind of psh, thing that happens. Okay, so let's say, what is it, okay? A little bit of a weird question, but but maybe we could say, uh, who's the guest speaker for that event on Thursday? I don't know yet. We don't have to say it there. I don't know yet, okay? I don't know yet. Well, you will know. Maybe you will know if now is Saturday, maybe you'll know on Tuesday. And the moment that you know who the guest speaker is for Thursday, you can say, I know who the guest speaker is. So that's a kind of event. So for that reason, we can, we can say simply don't know yet and use that tense. Haven't known yet, it gets into a lot of com complicated grammar that confuses the meaning there because haven't is usually about periods of time about duration now if you don't say yet and you just say i don't know there you're describing simply the state of you what is your condition knowing or not knowing not knowing okay so i don't know and every time i ask you do you know you will say i don't know i don't know i don't know every time i ask you right now i do not know so that's your kind of condition or your state which would change if then you do know on Tuesday, you find out and then you say, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so it's kind of your condition or your state. But then when you add the yet part, it adds that event piece to it where once you know, then it changes. Right. And that yet is suggesting that the event is coming up. OK, a little complicated. Now, what about this? Haven't. 
So haven't is usually for things that we do and not verbs usually, not, not always, but usually for things that we do and not verbs of state, right? Um, so if you if you go somewhere, if you if you see something, if you if you uh, if you buy something, right? If you say I haven't bought that, I haven't seen that, I haven't done that, then we're talking about whether or not it happened. Yes, but the focus is on up to this point. It's not true, right? It suggests then that there's a past that's leading up to this point where that is also true. If I say, I haven't seen it, I haven't seen it. All the way up to this point in my entire life, until this moment that you asked me, I haven't seen it. Now that could change. If I add yet, then it suggests it will change. But still, up to this point, it's true that I have not. So we're kind of referencing the past there. I haven't been there. I haven't been there means for my entire life, it is not true that I have been there. It's It would change if I went there and then I would say I have been there. But the focus, if I say I have been there, then is on it happening. It's true that it happened rather than focusing on the event, on when it happened, right? That's generally how we use, let's say, one way that we use have and haven't. And again, this one, although known, is the past participle of no, it doesn't work in this case because you're asking about someone's current state or current condition. And no, generally, as my state or my condition is a kind of ongoing thing. So I hope that I hope that answers your question. Kind of complicated. Um, all right. Yeah, great advocate. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Well, thank you guys for joining. I see we have more people joining, which is fantastic. Uh, if you have questions, as I said, about pronunciation or culture or word differences or whatever. Let me know. Just just uh, pop that in the chat. Um, we're going to be covering quite a few things today. I'm going to be jumping into a topic that a lot of people tend to ask about uh, in, a, in just a moment. If you haven't already done so, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe. And also you can sign up for a free course if you like. That's in the link in the description. Uh, now, the, the main topic for today is we're going to be talking about boys and girls. Now, I think there is some confusion about this, right? When someone says a boy, a girl, what's the thing that comes to mind? Are we talking about a child or an adult? Or can it be both? And in what situations can it be one or the other if it can be both, right? kind of confusing. Well, generally speaking, we use boys and girls casually to talk about females and males, or rather to reverse it, males and females, boys, girls, males, females. Except saying male and female sounds kind of scientific. Okay, you might be thinking then, what about men and women? Great, but men and women does give us a sense of formality. There's a bit more formality there, and it's only about adults. So you wouldn't have any kids that could be a man. Becoming a man is something that you'd, you'd go through as an experience of growing up. And it could be the same for becoming a woman. And there are a lot of cultural connections there, and we won't go into that. Okay. Now, when is boy or girl just about kids? Because actually, it can be. It can tell you that we're talking about children. If I say, I have a couple of boys. I have a couple of boys. What does that mean? Probably, 
in almost all cases, that means that you have children and your children have not grown up. Now, sometimes people will use it this way, but generally speaking, when someone says, my boys, they're talking about their male children. When someone says, my girls, right, can be used in different ways, but often that is about female children. So often we get this sense with the word girl and boy that we're talking about younger people or children, okay? But then it gets into this interesting territory of when it's used for both, okay? So we talked about how it might be used for kids. What about when someone says something like, well, he's such a handsome boy, right? Or even a sexy boy. Oh, okay. A cute girl, a sexy girl. Or, right, well, hold on a second. This gets now a little bit muddier. If, we, if you use the word sexy, you're probably talking about an adult, right? And so you hear people use boy and girl for adults, and we talk about each other as boys and girls often, especially in the context of dealing with the other gender, and especially in the context of dating, right? Now, if you're talking about one, it gets a little more complicated. Would you say you're dating a boy? <laughs> first people, first the first impression someone might have is, wait, wait you're dating a child, right? <laughs> because usually if you're talking about one, you'll say, I'm dating a guy, okay? But a guy might say, I'm dating a girl. And then people won't think you're talking about a child. You're talking about an adult. So there's a lot of cultural connotation and, and kind of mushiness here with how we use these, these words. But saying something like, all of those cute boys or all of those cute girls could very well be in a dating situation among adults. But it could also be, because the word cute is kind of fuzzy, in the situation of like a cute rabbit talking about kids. What a cute girl, what a cute boy being like a three-year-old who looks like a cute little rabbit, in that sense, cute. Then when they grow up, cute in a different sense. So it's all of this sort of mushiness around these words that makes it complicated when you're going into these situations. Can I use boy or girl? Or when should I use guy or man or what? Right. So the best thing to do is to kind of dive in Watch a lot of movies, TV shows, and really pay attention to who is using what word, where, and when, so that you know what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. Again, is it wrong to say that you're dating a boy? It's not wrong to say that, but it's not as common as saying that you're dating a guy, for example, in American, uh, in American English. Okay, why is that? I don't know why it's like that. These things kind of just take shape over time. I find it particularly interesting, all of this sort of thing, this kind of fuzziness around how words are used and when, but the best thing to do is just to jump in, get a feel for it, and once you do, you should feel pretty confident to use one or the other in any given situation. In what situation would you use the word last? I'm glad someone asked that question. So last, last, L-A-S-S, -S, never. <laughs> Simple answer, never. Um, especially in American English, it will never be used. I, I've never heard a human being say it in person in my entire life. You, you know, you might hear it in a sort of, uh, I don't know, some little town in... Scotland or something or, or something like that, maybe. But yeah, I've never used it in my entire life. Uh, so never. I'm going to go with never. Uh, okay. But what I really wanted to talk about is guy and guys, because that is perhaps even more interesting. Da, da, da. So um, let me... 
Let me take a sip of coffee. Aleda is here. Welcome. Hello. Good to see you. Good to have you. Um, in my, I need my blackboard thing. For anyone who's curious, this is what I use for the blackboard stuff. It is a Wacom Intuos and it's Bluetooth. So I just turn it on and it connects. Now it's connected. And then for the board, the blackboard, I'm currently using uh, Photoshop. Actually, I use Photoshop with a with a black background and a white pen so that it looks like a blackboard. Um, maybe I'll do a setup tour someday to talk about all of it, but it's actually it, all of it together is really complicated. <laughs> like switching around between this view and this view and other views, it, it, all of the things that go into what each one does and when and sound playing and uh, visuals and where I am and all of that stuff is, it, there's a lot that goes into setting it up so that it's fairly, uh, so that it's fairly smooth, actually. It's not as easy as you might think. Okay. You've probably heard people say guy and guys and thought to yourself, well, I think the word guy is about a man. But at the same time, I know for sure that I've heard people say guys to both men and women or just to women, girls saying guys to each other. So what the heck is going on here? And what we have to do is really explore the way that it's used. We have to explore the way that language changes in usage over time through examples. The best way to learn is to pay attention to how things are being used. Yeah, guy didn't always used to be used as guys to talk to men and women, but now it is. And so when it's used that way, you can't then say, oh, you can't say that because guys, that means men. And that's wrong to say. No, it doesn't mean that anymore. Okay, let's get into some examples, though, so that we can clarify this to make it really clear. Okay, so we're going to hop over to the Blackboard. And first, we're going to talk about just guy, the word guy. Now, to make it simple, I think the best thing to do is make it clear that the word guy without an S means a man, okay? And if you are talking to a man, you probably, you might not say guy, you might say sir or the person's name, but you might be thinking this is a guy. And when you talk about that person later, you might say that guy. Again, we'll look at some examples. But if you're talking to a lady and you're thinking, what is, what is this? <laughs> you're not going to say in your head, this is a guy. If you think guy, you think male, okay? But it's not always the case, as we will see. Okay, let's start with, let's start with first this one. Uh, let me... Hold on, let me hop over to, there we go. Oh, wrong one. This is the one I want. No, it's not. Where's my, where's my examples? Oh, this is from a previous lesson. Hold on, I've got it. 
I've got it. Give me a second. Guys, give me a second. I just need to change to change something. There we go. Better, better, better. All right. Okay, so Oops. There we go. When we are looking at a male or men somewhere, we may refer to them as guys, and if it's one, a guy. So if I say, what are those guys doing, and I don't know them, and they're doing something strange, some construction workers, for example, and I can see that there's some men over there, I might say, what are those guys doing? What I mean when I say that is, what are those men over there doing? I don't know. I need to look more carefully. Could I mean they're men and women? Probably not. I can't see them very well, so maybe. But usually you're talking about men over there. That's the same guy I saw yesterday. Could that be a woman? No. That guy is a man. And you could replace this with man. That's the same man I saw yesterday. Now, this, when we use this, feels a bit more, let's call it casual. Let's call it casual. It feels a bit more casual when we use guys as opposed to man or gentleman or something like that, right? Guy and guys used in this way. And the next one we'll look at is even more casual, okay? I think I'm a reasonable guy. Now, there you are referring to yourself as a man, right? But really, it's just a way to refer to yourself, right? You could replace this, I'm a reasonable person, with this word, person, if you want to, and that would be totally fine. I'm a reasonable man, I'm a reasonable person, I'm a reasonable guy. Basically, those are the same thing. The non-gendered version would be person not human, person. Now then, if a lady or a woman or a girl were going to say this, then she would say, I'm a reasonable woman. I'm a reasonable girl. I'm a reasonable person. Not, I'm a reasonable guy. All right? In this case, we're talking about men, man, boys. Okay? Well, actually, no, not boys if we mean children. Children will not, if it's a, a boy who's 12 years old, will not say, I'm a reasonable guy. He will say, I'm a reasonable boy, probably, in that situation. And if I'm looking at a 12-year-old over there, and I don't know what that 12-year-old boy is doing, I'll say, what is that boy doing over there? What is that little boy trying to communicate with a squirrel? Or... What are those boys doing over there? Playing frisbee? Whatever they happen to be doing. If I can see that they're male and younger, I'll probably say boys, not guys. That's a good clarification that I just thought of. Okay. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. This is from a famous, well, a relatively viral video. A guy was confronted. A man was confronted in a maybe Walmart or something. And... The guy pushed back in the confrontation, said, you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Kind of famous. Uh, let me see if I can actually pull it up because it is very, very entertaining. Let's just watch part of it. Here we go. How's that? How's that? How's that? Fuck you where you breathe. Me, okay. Why you don't tell me, me what the fuck to do. How's that, pal? I didn't tell you what you to do. You did. You said don't talk to people who you don't know. I'll talk to whoever the fuck I want to know. Never mind. How's that, pal? Never mind. I did tell him not to talk to That's you. right. So use your fucking head if you know how. Understood. Not happy. Okay, you little pimply little shit. Hey, you guys. Uh, if you guys could not 
Here it's coming. I think he's going to say it. That sounds good to me. So then leave. Uh, I'm checking out, sir. Yeah, Check out. Ring out Check guys, out. If you could take okay. six You're feet. not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're, You're not, not that guy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to get arrested for this? Arrested for doing what? Just like a pimple on the left. Somebody says something and you don't like okay, it. Sir. And you don't like it, right? Is what that is what it is? What is a pimple on the left? You little Stop pimp. Can you hold the camera the while store. I check? I'll leave the store. I'm okay? to the Fuck lady. you where you bleed, pal. Right where you breathe. <laughs> Go vote for fucking Biden and suck right here. Yeah. Have a good day, sir. Jeez. Angry man. But here's where he says it. If you could take okay? six You're not feet. that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. You're not that guy. This is the face of an angry man. <laughs> right. Okay. Now, are you that guy? I don't know. But what he's saying there, you're not that guy, is that's not who you are. You're not a tough guy. And you will hear people use that phrase. Oh, what do you think? You're some kind of some kind of tough guy? Are you some kind of tough guy or what? No, I'm not a tough guy. Tough guy is kind of macho, strong, right? So this is, I think, a good example uh, of this. Pardon the the vulgarity, uh, but uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a good example. Now, what about the other way? How do we use it to talk about anybody? And you could argue that the other way is even more common. This is one you hear I think even more often. What the heck? Why is why is the why is this so huge? <laughs> the world's largest the world's largest circle. So let's let's quickly take a look at a couple other examples that help us explore the way that guy has taken on a more gender neutral meaning and it doesn't cancel out the other one that we talked about. It doesn't make it not mean anything. All it does is add and this is something that happens with language. Meanings kind of add over time. Just it's natural. It's a natural process. So you hear people say, hey, guys, to talk to people in general if they want to get a group's attention, right? If you're out with four friends, regardless of gender, you're a man, you're a woman, you're a boy, you're a girl, you're a child, you're an adult, you're with all men, you're with all women, you're with men and women. It doesn't matter. It's useful in all situations. Hey, guys, gets their attention. And all the way down here, guys, look. It's basically like saying everyone. Everyone, look. Look, everyone. Guys, look. Guys, watch out. Hey, guys. And this is one of the most common intros you hear on a lot of YouTube videos. If you follow many YouTubers, the beginning of many YouTubers videos is, hey guys, or what's up guys, and watch out for it. You'll hear it really often, regardless of gender. Again, women say it, girls say it, boys say it, everybody says it. Hey guys, there's a, a video that I, or a, I don't know if it was a YouTuber, someone named Nicole, and I don't remember where I saw her or where I found her. But she always started the video in exactly the same way and kind of a, uh, she didn't have a very good camera. She sounded kind of sad all the time and she didn't have a lot of uh, energy in her videos, kind of just sad like this, like, uh, and she would start her videos like this. Hey guys, it's Nicole, like that. Every single video, hey guys, it's Nicole. If you can find that, I would, I recommend looking it up because, uh, something magical about that every video hey guys it's call now what about this one you guys this is used in different ways again regardless of gender but this could be to catch someone's attention you guys look or when you have news to share you guys something crazy just happened to me right now this is definitely younger sounding english i cannot visualize my 80 year old grandmother saying you guys i just can't picture it so there is some generationality to this usage as there is in for a lot of different phrases i can't picture her saying 
awesome or that's sick either. I cannot visualize it, right? So some things just depend on the generation you're in. So it feels younger. Oh my God, you guys, listen. You've probably heard that in a lot of movies. You've probably heard a lot of younger people say, oh my God, you guys, oh my God, you guys, oh my God, you guys. Guys, are you ready? So this one feels younger and more like a, I think of a teenager or a young person. And for some reason, when I hear this in my head, it's a girl's voice. But with this one, it's more general. Guys, are you ready? A parent might say that to their kids. I can imagine that very well. A parent has three kids. They're going on a trip. Guys, you ready? Okay, let's go. Are you guys ready? Same exact thing. Are you guys ready? So you guys and guys are you very common. Let's let's grab lunch, guys or guys. Let's grab lunch again. Just talking to a generalized group of men, women or both. And this one we already talked about. But just to get somebody's attention, guys, guys, guess what, guys, terrible news, <laughs> guys. Great news. Hopefully it's great news. Okay. Now, just quickly, let's see if we can look at one more video. We're not going to watch the whole video, but I just want to, I just want to share this uh, to really fully explore it. We looked at the, you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. We looked at that one. So maybe we can look at uh, you guys that girls are using. Okay, this is from uh, this is from Legally Blonde, the musical, a university performance. We're not going to watch the whole thing. We're just going to skip ahead so we can hear the you guys. And I believe this song is called Oh My God, You Guys. I, oh my God, this is Oh my God, oh my God, you guys. So that does feel to me that matches with my sort of perception of of this usage, this oh my god, you guys being uh, late teens, mid to late twenties thing, especially common among girls, young women. Not that men wouldn't say it, but it is, feels a little bit more. Uh, feminine to me or girly to me for some reason I just have that perception so I guess the takeaway that I that I want you to have is things change over time you have to be open to that one meaning that comes up that's new like you guys in this way newer doesn't have to replace the old meaning they can both be true and the only way to really get how to use them start using them naturally is to look at examples, practice examples, pay attention to how it is used. Hopefully now you have a pretty good idea for how to use you guys and guys. Um, hello. What is the Let's see, we have some new people. Nectar's here. Oh, amazing. Hello, hello. Luke, thank you for your effort from South Korea. Okay, we have, ah, okay, two people from South Korea joining. Fantastic. What, uh, uh, what about if there is a group of only women? You can't say guys in that context, can you? Yes, you can, 100%. That's what I'm trying to say. You absolutely can, 100%. In American English, it's common, is what, I, is what I mean. Can we say, heads up, guys, is the same as guys look? I mean, the main idea. I would say, yes, generally speaking, pretty much the same. 
of course, heads up can be different, can have different meanings. Like we could say, um, we could say heads up is um, look out like there's something potentially dangerous over there. Heads up, there's a ball falling from the sky. Uh, or we could say heads up is an announcement. Heads up, everybody. Uh, this has been delayed 30 minutes. We're going to be just a quick heads up. But it feels casual when we do it. You wouldn't hear if you're waiting for your flight uh, and you're waiting to get on a plane, you wouldn't hear, uh, good afternoon, passengers, heads up. We're going to be late. You know, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't match. There's going to be a level of formality to that one. This is an announcement from the captain. He has said we're having trouble with the wheels. We can't find them or something like that. So there's going to be a level of formality in different situations. This heads up, guys, feels casual. Using guys in this way feels casual. Even using guy for man feels casual. Um, greetings from Colombia. Hello, greetings. Can I take a coffee? Do you guys mind if I take a coffee break? I'm going to take a coffee break. In the meantime, let's, let's watch some TikToks or something. Can we just watch some TikToks while I take a little coffee break? I feel my, my throat's a little... My throat is a tiny bit scratchy, so I'm going to just go um, PD. Here's my favorite TikToker. Are you ready? I think his, his sense of humor is funny to me. I don't know why. It's kind of random, but I like it. Coffee break TikTok time. Okay, PD, here we go. What you sipping on, beer? Nice, I love beer. Would you like a sip? Yeah, I got kind of a scratchy throat though. Mind if we do the thing? Totally. Wow. Good, right? Oh yeah, I love beer so much, dude. Cheers. You don't have any beer in your cup. Oh fuck. Yeah. Mind if we do the thing? Totally. Cheers. No, I don't have any beer for the cheers. Oh fuck. Wanna just pour half of that into mine? Uh, sorry man, I only have one of these bad boys. Totally. I love beer, man. A couple sips of this stuff gets me feeling right. Oh, I'm so jealous, man. I only had one sip. Oh man, we gotta get you feeling right, my dude. Mind if we do the thing? Totally. Y'all mind if I get in on this? Yes, but did you bring your own vessel? My throat is a bit scratchy. Y'all know I keep that thing on me? In your back pocket, no less. Mind if we do the thing? I thought you'd never ask. Dear Lord, that is special. Cheers! Oh, fuck. We gotta get you some beer in that cup, my friend. Mind if we do the thing? Totally. Good lord, three sips of this junk gets me wasted. You're a crazy man. I want to party down. Get on. I like how uh, one thing that, that I, I think is funny is um, he, he plays all the characters, which I guess is normal, but he doesn't really, not well, in some of them he does, but he doesn't really do any variation. All the characters are the same person, just wearing different clothes. So he doesn't even try to do other characters. Uh, and then... Uh, he usually when you bleep out something, he always says, oh, fuck. Usually when you use a beep sound to cover it, it covers it and then you can't hear it. But he uses the bleep, but it doesn't cover the word that he used at all. Intentionally, of course. Oh, hey, I have these pants. I have the, these exact pants. I think. Whoa. You like this? Yeah, a lot actually. It's like a stomp vibe. What? Remember stomp? Oh yeah, I fucking love stomp. stomp. Come on, join in. How's this? It's perfect, man. Yo, is this what I think it is? <laughs> yeah, it's a stomp vibe. Remember stomp? Yeah, dude, stomp is amazing. My whole class went to stomp for a field trip in fifth grade. I didn't get to go because my mom forgot to sign the permission slip. That's devastating. That's okay, man. We're adults now. Yeah, we can stomp whenever. When you're an adult, Life is stomp. You can stomp anytime you want, want, want. Bars. It's a stomp vibe. No, dude. No real instruments allowed. Yeah, you gotta use a household item. What about this? Hell yeah, man. Give it a whirl. No, 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 Turn no. Turn it off. Make a nice beat, yeah, man. Yeah, get creative with it. Stomp style. Really let loose. 
I'll allow it. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. We stomping. We stomping. We stomping. Feels so good. Stomp. I remember stomp. Stomp is they they did uh Stomp did No, they're not twins. It's all the same guy. He's just shooting himself from different angles. There's only one of them. Uh and his his neck and chest is so hairy. It looks like his beard just continues all the way down. And it, it I mean it does. It's pretty much just one big piece. If he without a shirt, he looks like it looks like just a big beard everywhere. He's a very, very hairy person. Yo! What the hell are you guys doing? We're expressing ourselves through percussive energy. Stop doing that. It's a stomp vibe. I don't care. Remember stomp? Shut up. Okay. okay. <laughs> stomp was a thing. Use trash cans and drumsticks and make drum beats. Pretty cool. PD USA. And I actually... So he, he's been my favorite TikToker for a long time. And uh, I saw him one time. He just, he just walked right past me in New York. Just walking down the street. He, just, he went right past me. I'm so surprised. You don't often see... He's not even a celebrity. I don't even know how famous... I don't think he's that famous. But he's, I guess, relatively well-known on TikTok. And it was very strange to just see him on the street. They're saying stomp, S-T-O-M-P, um, stomp. I don't know how much of this I can play, but stomp. Stomp. Let's see if we get a video. Yeah, stomp is this kind of stuff. I don't think I can play a lot of this without getting in trouble with YouTube, so I'll just play a couple seconds. They do a lot of, yeah, bl brooms and trash cans. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. He looks angry. He looks angry about his broom. Anyway, that's Stomp. I don't know where Stomp actually performs. This was uploaded. I didn't even know they were still around. Oh, nine years ago. Maybe they're not around anymore. Nine years ago. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, back to the stuff. You know what we can do? Hold on. I'm getting a lot of spam calls. What the heck? I've been getting a lot of spam calls recently, and uh, I don't know why. Stop it. Stop spam calling me. I don't know if that's a problem where you guys are, but here, it's it's to the point where every call is a spam call or someone trying to scam me. And so I, I don't even remember the last time a regular person has called me. And I don't use phone calls, period. I don't, I never talk on the phone unless I need to call a business for some customer related serve, you know, customer service related thing. I had to call some uh, furniture place to check on a delivery, that sort of thing once in a while. But I never just talk on the phone to someone. Is it, do you guys actually talk on the phone? Do you communicate on the telephone or, or not? Uh, is it true that TikTok has been forbidden in the USA? No, it is not true. No, it's it works great. All good. Not been forbidden. It is very, very popular. So I'm thinking about just completely blocking all phone calls uh, on my phone because I don't want to. I don't want to hear about it. All right, what's next? What's next? I want to get into a news story quickly, and I have an app review I want to do, and then I want to talk a bit about words related to dating, because we're on the general theme of boys and girls, so words related to uh, dating. We'll talk about that shortly. 
Uh, keep the questions coming if you have questions with questions about learning, tips, culture, idioms, phrases, grammar. Alejandro has a question. Luke, do you recommend reading audiobooks plus reading the same book at the same time instead of reading casual English books with no audio? I think that's the question. So let's just say the question is generally audiobooks, regular books, or both. And when I say regular books, I mean looking at a physical book and reading it. What's a book, you might ask? This is a book. <laughs> this is a book. This is a book that I wrote uh, in 1957. It's the story of my life. So what do we do about this? I believe that reading is great, but it has different benefits depending on how you do it. If you sit down and read a physical book, you're able to pick up words that are new better and see them in context better. So you're reading and you find a phrase, interesting phrase, idiom or word. You look at it in the whole context of the sentence. You can see it all at one time and you're able to then see the spelling. Okay, it's spelled like this and search it and look up more possible definitions or meanings and more examples of how it's used and more quickly start to use that new word or phrase more naturally. So I think physical books are better for that. Physical books are better for acquiring new language, especially words and phrases. Again, there it is right in front of you. You're looking at it. You can see the, the context. Audiobooks are better for training you to pick out or understand meaning that comes through here. Most English learners got most of their background and training from their eyeballs, exams in school and tests and vocabulary lists and the chalkboard in third grade English class, right? It's all coming through here. Audiobooks are a great way to train yourself to understand meaning through your ears. Podcasts are good too, but I think audiobooks are a great choice or courses from The Great Courses, for example. It's a great choice. It's going to be more difficult to take a word or a phrase out of that and look it up. Number one, because you might not know the spelling. Number two, because you're not looking at the whole sentence to see the context. You can go back and listen to it, but it's a little bit more complicated to pick out new language. So in that sense, I would say audiobooks, great for improving your listening skills, your listening comprehension, and your kind of balance between being able to understand what people are saying all the time and understand what you read and do both. And if you feel like your reading is way better than your listening, then definitely do more audiobooks, watch more TV shows without subtitles, listen to more podcasts, right? Now, what about both? That's the real question here. Should we do both? You read a book at the same time as you listen to the audiobook. I don't see, in particular, I don't see any big benefits to that, honestly. If you're reading it at the exact same time as you're listening, that's taking away the benefit of challenging you to try to understand what you're hearing, right? That's the challenge of listening is your, your brain has to put the pieces together, figure it out. That's the challenge and that's what kind of pushes you to improve. It's sort of like if you're watching a movie and you have subtitles in your language and you say, I'm watching the movie to learn English. It's an English speaking movie, but you're, you have your, your language's subtitles or English subtitles. In fact, you're going to be focusing on the subtitles and you're not going to be really working on your listening. But if there are no subtitles, period, you have to just understand what's going on. Your listening is going to improve more quickly. Okay. So it's kind of the same thing. So you're taking away the listening benefit by doing both at the same time, reading physically and listening. If your goal is to 
learn new words and phrases and new language structures and new grammar and stuff like that, which is what physical books are better at teaching. And you also listen. Um, I guess the benefit may be in pronunciation because you might read a word and not know how it's pronounced and having the audio going at the same time can show you that, okay, this is pronounced phenomenon or whatever the word happens to be, right? So you can get the audio pronunciation at the same time. That I can see being a benefit. So maybe for that reason, and I suppose also just having the audio in the background going on could be a could be a positive thing. I don't think it hurts, but I also don't think it's good if you're working on your listening skills specifically. So long answer, Alejandro, it's a good question, and hopefully that answers it. Do you have to understand before continuing to reading? Every word you don't understand, search it. No, this is a follow-up question, but no, do not force yourself to understand every single word. Do not do that. If you do that, you're going to give up very easily. You're going to quit. You should focus on understanding the meaning. If you understand generally what this is about, generally what's happening in the story, generally this description, and you pick out a few new words and phrases, that's fine. But don't pick out every single one. If you say, okay, I'm going to go through this book and I'm going to I'm going to look up every single word and phrase I don't understand, you're going to lose your mind and you're going to give up. So strongly recommend to not do that. Pablo says, what I'm doing recently is watching films and TV, namely The Sandman, reading the subtitles in Spanish, but uh, very concentrate on the words they say in English and not repeating them out. Oh, and repeating them out loud, not not repeating them. All right. Well, if that works for you, Pablo, I would still challenge you to turn off the Spanish subtitles because it is that constant reminder of I am concentrating on the uh, I'm concentrating on the sounds. I'm concentrating on the sounds. Right. You have to constantly do that. Whereas if you take the subtitles away, you have to concentrate on the sounds. You don't have to tell yourself, concentrate on the sounds. You must, because if you don't, you won't understand what's going on. And you'll miss some things here and there, but force you'll be forced to only pay attention to the, to the meaning and the things that the characters are saying. And also, Sandman is not that hard. Sandman is eh, not that difficult. English subtitles better than Spanish subtitle. That's right. How about this? Your native language is uh, Japanese. You read Spanish subtitles and you listen in English. Ah, <laughs> this is a this is a challenge for. This is a big challenge for my wife and I because she can read English, right? But if it's subtitles, she would definitely prefer Chinese because that's her first language. Makes sense, right? You want to enjoy watching a movie. You don't want to feel like you have to carefully read every every word. So usually, usually what we'll do is, for a lot of movies, no subtitles. She can understand English very well. Some movies that are more complicated, she'll want to have maybe complicated ideas. She'll want to have the Chinese subtitles. It just helps it adds meaning to it, right? It makes it more interesting. But we can't watch anime together. Like Japanese TV shows, for example, we can't watch it together because we need subtitles, but maybe the ideas are complicated. The English subtitles, she can do it, but it's kind of tiring. She doesn't really enjoy it. And I... I need I need the subtitles and her Eng English reading skills better than my Chinese reading skills. So we go with English subtitles, but then she'll get tired of that because it's not, it's not fun to just sit and read your second language for hours at a time, right? So that is sometimes a challenge for sure. Lily says, you're right. Whenever I have listened, I try to focus on everything and details. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Alejandro says, because Spanish subtitles are the clue to know the exact word in English without reading it. Okay. Pablo sticking to his, um, sticking to his insane approach. <laughs> Not insane. I joke. I kid. I tease. Uh, is told get the 90. Wait, wait, okay. Let me just read this. Is told get the 90% is easy for learning. This option is 70. You must avoid. Get anxious if you don't catch a paragraph. If you get the plot in the whole, it's better to carry on with reading. I think that I think what you're saying there is, yeah, don't stress about understanding everything, right? If you do, you're going to hate it. If you hate something, then you're going to give up easily. So I think that makes sense to me. Yeah. It's like with exercise. For a while, when I would do exercise, I would do it for two hours or something. And then I started to realize, oh, I, I'm i dreading doing that. So I would do it less. But then I realized, well, if I don't have this insane requirement of myself, and I just say, I'm going to work out for 25 minutes. Oh, 25 minutes, no problem. Then I stick with it more regularly. I'm less likely to give up because it's not this giant, ah, horrible thing that I hate that I have to do. So I think there's something to that. We have to accept our psychology and not everyone can be an insane workout person like, uh, what's that guy's name? Um, insane exercise, man. What's his name? What is that guy's name? Oh, there's a there's a trainer who's absolutely ups, he's he works out six hours a day or something like that, and he ran marathons with broken feet. He's he's an absolute crazy person. Uh, not everyone is like that. I don't want to be like that. Who wants to be like that? It's not interesting. I mean, I want to enjoy life and 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 have good habits at the same time. You know. People who are in too intense, they might have something else going on there. That's just my little theory. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to... I'm going to... Okay. All right. Oscar's here. Welcome. Hello. 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 Yes. Speaking of Speaking of the big book that I have, Hey, we usually do a new word from the dictionary. Let's do it. I don't want to skip it. It's a tradition. A new word. This is my 25-minute workout that I talked about where I just hold this up. And I open it up to a random page, and I look for a word that I do not know. This is a dictionary from 1957, and there are many words that I do not know, believe it or not. In fact, I probably don't know many of them, most of them. Uh, okay. Large helmet. Hume. What? How do you pronounce this? Hum? H E A U M E. Home. Home? I'll look up the pronunciation later. C helmet. A large helmet reaching down to the shoulders worn in the 12th, 13th, and 14th centuries, usually over an inner defense, such as a coif or mail. Mail meaning a chain, chain mail, metal, sort of metal protection. H-E-A-U-M-E, H-E-A-U-M-E, H-E-A-U-M-E. There's a picture of it here. Can you see that? That's it. H e a u m e. I don't. I gotta figure out how to say this. It weighs twenty five pounds. Insane. Uh. Okay. H e a u m e. And we'll look it up. And we'll just we'll just look it up in dictionary dot com. I think it's gonna be home or something like that. Okay. Here we go.
Let's listen. Home. Home. Okay, I was right. Home. So all of those letters, and it sounds the same as H O M E. Home. 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 Helm, noun, helm. Oh, they, oh, wow. They only have one definition. Uh, origin of home, middle French, old French. Helm. Oh, okay. Helm, I know. A helm would be a helmet. So it's it's uh, etymologically linked to H-E-L-M, which I do know. Helm uh, in the old English. Helm. 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 Home. Home. Helm. Uh, da, 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 da. Helm is related to a ship. Where's the hat meaning? Before 900, Middle English helm, Old English helma, cognate with Middle High German halma and helm handle, Old Norse yalm rudder. Where's the hat definition? Ah, here we go. Also, home also called Great Helm, a medieval helmet typically formed as a single cylindrical piece with a flat or raised top, completely enclosing the head. Archaic helmet. So that's where we get the word helmet. So the word helmet, which is a very common word, comes from helm, which is old, old English, old French, which is connected to home, which is also... Old English. Interesting. Very interesting. Helm, an archaic or poetic word for helmet. Cool. That, that book is a giant encyclopedia. No, it is not a giant encyclopedia. It is a giant dictionary. How much does it weigh? I don't know, but it, it probably is... Um, it's probably it's probably at least 20 pounds I would say maybe 20 pounds hmm? thought I had some a smudge on my head it turned out it was just the shadow of my hair <laughs> I'm an idiot <laughs> uh, what an idiot Helm's deep yeah exactly from Lord of the Rings yep 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 okay. Well, I think we can look at Magoosh first. Um, if you're learning new words, there are a lot of different ways to do it. We previously have looked at a video game for learning words. Good if you're interested in that sort of thing. But what about quiz apps? Well, we're going to take a look at one. It's called Magoosh. They have different apps for different purposes, right? And we'll, we'll see how it works. And then we'll talk about if it's good for actually learning words, okay? So we're going to hop over and take a look at Magoosh. I have it here on my phone. It is very simple, which I kind of like. Sometimes these apps that do vocabulary, quiz, flashcard things are very complicated and you get lost. And it looks like they have different apps for different purposes. So if you're doing GRE, GMAT, SAT, ACT, by the way, those SAT and ACT would be for high school students in the United States looking to take the college entrance exam. So you take a college entrance entrance exam. If you're going to go to university, that's usually part of the application process. So they have specific words for those. IELTS, which would be more maybe relevant to you, and TOEFL. These are the, if you don't know, two main primary English exams, IELTS and TOEFL, for non-native English speakers who want to test their English or need to test their English to go to university, maybe to get a job, or if you just want to test your English. So here we are on the um, TOEFL and IELTS words. I'm going to go study these words. 
And again, very simple here. I like the simplicity. Study this section. Common words. Can we go hard words? I'm going to start with hard words and start hard level one. And it's giving me zero out of 10. So that's cool that it's telling me. It's telling me. Yeah, I like that. Telling me how many they're going to be. I can set my expectations. All right, new word. Choose the best definition. Um, so the best definition would be, you know, one way of doing it. The other way would be to give you a definition and ask you to choose the word. There are a lot of different ways to quiz, and there's a lot of debate about which way of doing it is best for flashcard apps. Spaced repetition definitely works. Spaced repetition is spacing the frequency of the words at the right places to maximize or increase retention, remembering it. Um, as for which you choose, I think that's kind of up for debate. Orient, age or make older, become in line with a point, give helpful things, find new information. I'm not sure. Now, I know the answer, okay? But trust me, <laughs> I'm just curious what happens when I click I'm not sure, okay? I want to try a wrong answer too, but let's click that. All right, so it just tells me what it is. Ah, and, and, and it's actually useful because it gives you the pronunciation, which is nice. Orient. Ah, okay, orient. 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 Become in line with a point. I knew that. And then they give an example sentence. The statues appear to be oriented toward the sunrise. Master 10 more words to unlock hard level two. So I like that they lock level two because that forces you to go through a specific path. If it's so random, it's easy to give up and not remember these things, right? So I like that they kind of force it. You have to do this and then you can unlock the next level. Um, and I like that they have the Orient. pronunciation, although I wish that it, I wish that they had different pronunciations Orient. and not just one quick, Orient. quick one. That's kind of low quality recording, but, and very importantly to have an example sentence that is very, that is key. Okay. Discreet. And now it's not asking for definitions, but it's asking for synonyms, same meaning, discreet, careful, separate, sophisticated, Subtle, I'm not sure. Ah, all right. Let's do, let's just see what happens. Let's do subtle. Discreet, separate. You, uh, your left arm and right arm are controlled by two discrete areas of the brain. Discreet. 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 Okay, so now we know what happens with a wrong answer. Welfare. Health. Money and things you own, process, method, feeling, I'm not sure. Okay, let's go with the right answer, which is health. Correct. Health. A perfect government would care. Even if you give the right answer, they still give the definition, which I also like. A perfect government would care more about the welfare of its people than anything else. Correct. All right. Institute. Keep in one place. Start a system. Study. Learn about. Make decisions for. I'm not sure. I'm going to go with start a system. Hey, next word. We're going to go quickly now. Okay. Orient uh, to become in line with a point. Next word. Facilitate. Make impossible. Join. Leave. Make easier. We're going to go with make easier. Uh, enforce. Hurt. Make people follow a rule. Become stronger. Agree to do. Make people follow a rule. I'm going to go with that one. Enforce. And nice. So we're just going to go th fly through these very quickly. I want to see what happens when I unlock the next level. Just curious. Distreet, sophisticated. Okay, we already did that one. Got that one. Next word. We got to get all of these. Facilitate. Ah, spaced repetition. The repeating ones that I've already done before. All right. Let's go quickly. Derive. Derive. Encourage to do. Debate about. Originate in. I'm not sure. Separate from. Huh? Originate in. Derive could be, though. Okay, I actually got that one wrong legitimately. <laughs> what? Discrete, separate. Yep, okay. Generate, produce. I'm trying to go as quickly as possible. Derive, uh, derive, 
I really think it could be separate from in some cases, but they want to say originate in, orient, become in line with the point. Very good. Ah, so it's repeating the ones that I previously got wrong. If I get it right the first time, I think it's not repeating it. But if I get it wrong once, then they're going to give it to me again to make sure I've got it. To derive. Oh, I, I, didn't I just do this one? Okay, next, pursue, follow hard, pick out something, grow slowly. Follow hard? That's a strange phrasing, right? All right, I think it's that one, but that's a very weird way to say it. Follow hard? The baby elephant ran, but the pack of lions pursued it. I don't think that's the right phrase to use for pursue. Sorry. Monitor. Keep in one place. Watch closely. Move around. It's, it's this one. Oh, all correct. Good. So it's using the spaced repetition so, or something like it specifically for uh, ones that I got wrong and the ones that I got right, it's not asking me about. Okay. So very good. I think overall it's pretty clean. I like the flow. I like the structure. Again, I like that they're providing the. Um, I like that they're providing the sound, the pronunciation, and the sentences. And now it is letting me to letting me enter level two. And I'm gonna recommend this. Oh, perfect, perfect timing. I'm gonna give this app a nine. I think it's actually pretty good. I'm tempted eight or nine. Uh, all right, let's go with nine. Nothing is perfect. And then I can continue with the next set. So I think if your goal is to study words that other people are giving you, this is pretty good. I wish that this one had more audio or more real sounding audio. It sounds a bit mechanical or low quality. And I wish they had two or three example sentences instead of just one. And I felt like some of the phrases, I did actually get one wrong <laughs> with, with uh, which one did I, which one did I get wrong? Uh, derive, right? But the follow hard phrasing is a little weird. So there might be some strange phrasing for the definitions or synonyms. So that might be a slight weak point, but overall, I think it's good in that it's bringing up words that you got wrong again and forcing you to do those before going on to the next thing. Having a clear path is a good way to force you to kind of stick with it rather than just jumping around randomly and getting bored. However, this is other people telling you which words you should learn. There are other apps for learning in the flashcard style that allow you to add your own words based on your life experience. So you have to consider that too. Should you be learning words that other people are telling you to learn? Maybe, yeah, maybe that's good for a foundation, but also you need a way to pick out words that you encounter in your daily life that you can then remember. Maybe this way, maybe with another flashcard app, or maybe in your own way, just by building sentences that include those new words that you encounter. I think there's generally no one perfect way to learn or master words. It's good to do all of these things. It's good to use flashcards to remember things at sort of high speed. It's good to practice making example sentences to really master the word and its different uses in order to actually start using it in your daily life. All of the above, right? And more. It's good to hear new words that you're never going to use ever just so that you know them, so that you understand what's going on around you, right? Don't look for one thing as a perfect ultimate solution. Instead, try things out, see what you like. As far as vocabulary apps go, I think this one, Magoosh, is pretty good. I give it an 8.5, 8.5 out of 10. There is no 8.5 option in their, in their review, but uh, I would give it an 8.5. Let me know what you think if you give it a try. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts. Uh, hello, doctor. Welcome. Good to have you. Brennan, why did I click on this video? I'm a fluent English speaker. Yeah, it's a great question. Get out. You're not welcome here, sir. No, you are. You're welcome, of course. But 
But yeah, why? Good question. Heck of a question. Derive and originate have similar meanings. I suppose you're right about that. I was thinking for the derive one, my head went to, and to be fair, I don't think I read all the options carefully, but I was looking at derive as in this, for example, compound or solution uh, was was made out by by separating one thing from another and so in my head i went to the separate implication but that's right that it does mean originate from i don't know what i was thinking i think i was moving a little too quickly oh well um yes only how long it is not necessary to put time sorry i meant time don't put long in the phrase Raphael. just how long have you been studying english Wait, wait, where's the original question? That's what I want to see. What, what, what? Where's the original question? Oh, I see. Raphael's question. Yes. Raphael says, Brennan, how long time have you been studying English? And I would have answered this myself, except Alejandro says, don't put long in the phrase, Raphael. It's just, how long have you been studying English? Which is correct, right? Um, or sorry, no, Raphael says, how long in the phrase instead of how much time to put in the phrase. So yeah, you can say, how much time have you been studying English? But it sounds weird. How long by itself is correct. That is the best way to say it, yes. How many, if you want to say how many you could, how many days, how many years have you been studying English? Right, but that's not what, uh, that's not what, what was, hold on. I don't believe that was the comment because Brennan said, I'm a fluent English speaker. That could mean that Brennan is a native English speaker, potentially. Uh, all right. I want to jump back over to the blackboard briefly because I do want to talk about um, I do want to talk about something. If I've missed any questions, pop those in again. Um, scrolling, I don't want to scroll up at the moment, so put those in again, guys. If you haven't already done so, I would very much appreciate if you could hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. You can also get a free course in the links in the description or if you want you can sign up for my courses using the other links below. All right. How many years? Because we don't know the time. Yes, that is right. Good, good, good. Ah. Uh, I don't need to answer questions. You guys have got it down. All right. Give me a second, will you? So, I want to talk a little bit about, stay on topic, dating. If someone says, we're dating, what does that mean? Does that mean they're in a serious relationship? Or does that mean they're just sort of casually still going on some dates? There can be some confusion around this, and understandably so. It's a little confusing. It's kind of messy. So what we're going to do is just briefly explore this question. We're going to talk about a few common phrases around dating, and we're also going to talk about some common questions that people will ask about other people who may or may not be 
dating. Okay, so let's hop over to the blackboard. Let me adjust myself there. Not sure why that looks weird. And we're going to start with just the words. Okay, we're going to start with dating, going out, that's a G, going out. Okay. Hooking up. Seeing someone. And then we'll look at quickly single taken. Okay. Now, I actually want to hold off on this. We're going to come back to dating because that's the that's the general the general word and there's some fuzziness there, okay? If someone says they're going out with someone, generally that means that they are together, they go on dates, but it's not so serious that they're about to get married or something. So it has a kind of casual feeling. For example, Jessica and Steve are going out. It has a casual feeling, but it does mean that they are generally in a relationship. Now, it may or may not be a very serious relationship where they've made a commitment to each other, but it's more than just one or two dates probably. There's a bit more commitment than this one, which would be pretty much purely sexual, right? Hooking up, and you hear hookup culture, and did they hook up, is really just sleeping together, right? And there's no real suggestion of there being any kind of commitment or even going on dates. People may hook up and have never been on a date before, right? This would be in the territory of one night stands or maybe just meeting a few times and again, sleeping together, but not suggesting something more, not suggesting a relationship. We start using the word relationship usually when there are a few dates, right? And there are there's more than just the, the casual feeling. It can still be kind of casual, but there's a bit of a commitment happening, not a serious commitment, but a commitment to the extent that you would say, I'm not single anymore, right? You have said that you're with this person. Now, it's fuzzy because people have different ideas about what that means. If someone's been on three dates, they might say, yeah, we're in a relationship. We're going out. And that could mean the same thing to someone who sees those three dates as a very important, serious thing. And it's also different in different cultures. Some cultures, after one date, you are dating, you are in a relationship on the road to marriage. And in some places, for example, in the United States, in a lot of groups in the United States, especially younger people, you might say you're not dating even if you've been together for six months. You still won't announce that you're dating and you still might be seeing other people, right? Now, seeing someone, again, could be that you're in a relationship. It could be that you have a bit of a commitment to someone. But also, seeing someone could be used more casually to mean something like, I'm kind of with somebody at the moment, but I also might be with other people too, and I'm not in anything very serious. However, when you want to tell somebody that you are not available to get involved in anything romantic with anybody new, then you might say, I'm seeing someone. So if somebody asks, are you single? And you say, I'm seeing someone, that means you're in a relationship, okay? If someone says, are you taken? Again, it's the same thing. Taken means that you are in a relationship. I'm taken. That kind of starting to have an old-fashioned feeling. 
what people tend to say is I'm I'm actually I'm seeing someone I'm in a relationship I am dating someone and again I want to be very clear this is not this 100% thing where if someone says I'm dating someone that always means 100% that I'm very seriously in a relationship and I'm not considering others it could mean that to many people but to some people, it may just mean we've been on a few dates and I haven't made any serious commitments and I'm open to other people as well. So that's why this gets a little bit fuzzy. When I hear the word dating, I want to know, are you dating or are you on a date, right? If someone has been on a date, that doesn't mean they're dating in my mind. Oh, we're, we're going on a date. We went on a date last week. Okay, great. That doesn't mean you're in a relationship. You just met someone and had dinner. Whether something else happened or not, you met someone, you ate some food together, you had a conversation. If you're dating, that to me feels like we're together, we're in a relationship of some kind, you're seeing each other, right? It's more than just meeting once in a while, hooking up or something like that, right? Now, sometimes you will hear, especially I think among younger people, hanging out, hanging out. Some people don't want to say that they're in a relationship or announce it for a long period of time. It's especially more and more common, I think. Even five or six months, you're kind of together. You do a lot of stuff together, but you haven't really made a commitment. You don't want to say you're in a relationship. You don't want to say you're taken. You don't want to say that you're not single. You don't want to say that you're seeing someone. You don't want to say that you're dating. So you say, oh, we're just kind of hanging out. We're still just hanging out. It's kind of a trial period in that sense. Now, I know that's very different in different cultures. In some places in the world, that is not okay. In the United States, generally speaking, among people under, I don't know, 45. I don't know the age exactly. It's, it's pretty normal. It's pretty common. Okay. Now, what about some questions that people ask? What are some of the common questions? Let's dive into a few of those. What about, are you uh, I'm just going to put are you because I'm going to use these for all of my questions, okay? Are you a thing? <laughs> Sometimes is this a thing? We'll talk about that. Are you seeing someone? We talked about that one, but that would be a question form. Are you together? I need to put a question mark here. Let me make this a little more clear, dot, 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 so that you know these are together, okay? Are you together? And sometimes we'll hear, are you an item? Now, I think this is newer. This is kind of neutral, very common. This is neutral, very common. And this is, I feel like uh, the connotation, it starts starting to feel a little outdated. Are you a thing? Is this a thing? You point at two people who you think might be dating. I thought you guys were just hanging out. I thought you just kind of liked each other, but you were kind of dating around or seeing other people too. Is this a thing? That means, are you in a relationship now? A thing would be one thing. So if you're one thing, a thing, you are an, a, a group, you are a unit, you are together, you are in a relationship, you have made a commitment to each other. It, is this a thing? Are you a thing? You might say that to one of them about both together, right? Your friend, you're asking your friend, are you guys a thing? Are you two together? Or to both of them, are you two a thing? Are you two a thing? That sounds weird, I know, but that's how you would say it. And the answer to that would be, yes, we're together. Or no, 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 no. We're not, we're not serious. We're just hanging out. Are you seeing someone? Again, you're asking someone if they're dating someone. That could be because you're showing interest or 
maybe you're looking for an update from a friend, right? Are you seeing someone? Are you seeing him? Are you seeing her? If we know who we're talking about, are you seeing her? Are you seeing each other? Maybe not so common. So I might stay away from that one. Are you together? Are you together? Well, physically, yeah, we're together right now. We're both sitting here together eating food. But that's not what that means usually in terms of relationships. What it usually means in terms of relationships is, are you in a relationship? Are you dating? Are you seeing each other? Have you made that little commitment of we're not going to date other people we're taken? Now, this is putting aside the idea of open relationships, which is even more complicated in terms of language and phrases. So let's put that to the side. We're kind of just talking about the traditional system of single, taken, and in a relationship, meaning taken, not single, right? I suppose the general phrase or the general word to use uh, when it's not that simple would be it's complicated. That's a common thing that people say. It's complicated. Are you single? It's complicated. Together and an item are pretty much the same. I feel like an item is becoming kind of outdated, but to say, are you two an item? Something an aunt would say to uh, her nephew who is with a girl and you want to know if they're they're together or in a relationship. Are you two an item? That's, that's such an anti thing to say, I feel. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I would ever personally use that one, but hey, that's just me. So again, I want to emphasize there is a bit of flexibility here when it comes to the terms and the phrases we use to talk about dating and relationships. Dating by itself, again, has this fuzziness of some people meaning it as a commitment, a relationship, and others meaning it more as this sort of casual thing where we're just going on dates but haven't made a commitment. And there some people might use just hanging out. So there's a lot of fuzziness. And really, the only thing you can do is listen for examples, see how it's used, try it out for yourself, and see how people react when you do that. Okay, so if you have any questions about this stuff or anything else, let me know in the comments. Luke, do you use your mouse to write down at the blackboard? Oh, you must have missed the part where I showed the, the board that I use. No, sir. What I use is this thing. Okay. It is a, I use an, a Wacom Intuos. And that is why I can actually write as opposed to, I, I would be impossible to do that with something like a trackpad. I don't use a mouse. I use a trackpad, right? It would be absolutely impossible to do that on a blackboard. But if I'm on a blackboard and I have this thing, then when I do this, it is pressure sensitive and it can write very easily and you can use keys to erase stuff and it looks a lot easier than it is to set up, but it's very convenient. That's how, that's how, that's what I use. That's how I do it. You guys ever want me to do a sort of setup tour? I've always, I'm always curious about when I see very cool uh, video stuff or how they do the setup. I'm always curious, okay, what apps are you using? How do you link it all together? How do you get the sound to play? How do you show the phone screen? How are you doing all of this? I really like that sort of technical stuff. That's fun for me. Uh, and I, I always want, I always wish, I, why don't they just do a tour of how they do it all? So if, if people are interested in that, I'd be happy to, uh, happy to do it. Um, I wouldn't reveal everything though. I do have some secrets. Teacher Luke, have you ever been interested in learning Spanish at some point in your life? Uh, do you think it is useful to speak Spanish? It's definitely useful to speak Spanish for sure. I mean, Spanish is 
everywhere in the United States. The most popular music that plays is in Spanish. And uh, in New York State, I mean, so many people speak Spanish in New York City, around it, it, so many Spanish speakers. So I think it would be very useful. Um, uh, I learned Spanish in high school. Uh, I can't say that I remember very much of it. But I will say a surprising amount of Spanish popped out of my mouth. I thought I'd completely forgotten every single thing I learned, but then I went to Colombia and I found a, a more stuff than I expected coming out of my mouth. And I thought, where did that, what, how, who, that, how did I know that? How do I remember that? I think I've forgotten a lot of it, but I think there are still a few things there and I would eventually maybe like to learn it more seriously, but it's more of a priorities thing, right? Uh, Chinese is a, is a higher priority for me for personal reasons. Uh, my wife is Chinese being primary, but I would like to learn Spanish. Okay, what have we got? We've looked at Magoosh. Shall we look at a news story? How long have we been going for? Okay, we should go for about two hours. Well, let's let's take a look at the the news, or we could do some Reddit English questions. We do one or two Reddit English questions and, and then look at the news. Louise, hey, how's you guys? Cheers from Brazil. Welcome, Louise. Welcome, welcome. I think I need another coffee break. Sometimes I need a minute or two to kind of just rest my voice because I'm speaking constantly. Uh, the best improvisation. Improv is when people are just speaking freestyle and maybe in a character. The best improvisation I've ever seen in my entire life is something I've probably watched 10 times is an interview that John Oliver did with the two guys from Oh Hello. If you haven't seen Oh Hello, it's on Netflix. It's a Broadway show produced by two comedians, Nick Kroll and John Mulaney. John Mulaney is a stand-up comedian, so he does comedy with prepared stuff. And Nick Kroll now produces a show called Big Mouth. But the two guys met in university i believe and they started doing sketches together comedy sketches together and i believe they met at an improv class or group or something like that and they started doing improv together improv is when you have a scenario you have a situation but you haven't planned what you're going to say you don't have a script and you just play off of each other and kind of come up with something on the spot my favorite improv, I'm going to recommend that you watch it if you want to see the very best improv I've ever seen, in my opinion, my humble opinion, of course. It is an interview that John Oliver did with these two guys at 92nd Street Y. The conversation is an hour and 25 minutes long, and they don't have any prepared material. He's asking them questions, and they're just going off. And it's great. I find it to be hilarious. We'll just watch a second of it. Let's let's hop over here. So this is the interview. John Oliver, you probably have seen. He's got, uh, la what is his show? Last Week Tonight on HBO? One, two, three. <laughs> the second one dips. Yeah. yeah. The uh, second one, Beetlejuice appears. In this case, Henry Kissinger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk a little. I guess we should talk for a while just about the weather. Um, oh. Yeah. What, 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 Could we what have an interesting about, take on it? Is yeah. this uh, <laughs> is this temperature good for you? Too hot? It's perfect temperature. Okay. We do a saran wrap in the morning, and then we get on a very crowded G train. <laughs> right. The G, it's like a trolley that takes you from Long Island City, mm -hmm. which which is a terrible place. Mm -hmm to Grin Point, which is a fake place. 
If you're a homeowner in New York hey. and you're still paying for electricity, then you could be missing out on free government assistance. Oh, that's good. And it's know. just three. There's only three cars on it, mm -hmm. and it makes two it's stops, true. and it runs for 20 minutes a day. The G train is the worst train in New York City. If you're ever trying to get from Queens to Brooklyn, the G train is one of the only ways to do it, unless you want to go through Manhattan, and it's a horrible experience. This <laughs> is terrible. One of the I'm three people from your country to do something worthwhile. <laughs> Who's the other two? Princess Diana, and then who else? Excuse Ricky me? Gervais. <laughs> Ricky Gervais. I don't like. I do not. Like. I'm gauging what I want to say right now. Yeah. Now we're big Dodi Al Fayed guys. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it was a tragedy. Yeah. It was a tragedy. No, it, it a really tra was. It was All kidding aside. It was a tragedy. All kidding aside. Um, <laughs> uh, if anyone they're making each other. They're making each other laugh because they don't know what the other person is going to say, right? Especially the guy on the left. The stuff that he comes up with on the spot is just uh, amazing, hilarious. So, so boss. <laughs> Go west, baby. We're not, this is the, we have a, we have no, a. The bars reign supreme now, too, because the other, H&H &H is gone. H&H &H is gone. But uh, not forgotten, but forgotten. Uh, <laughs> there's a B&H dairy in town, which is weird, because there's B&H, the electronics store, which is a great place to get screamed at by the Orthodox. <laughs> That's uh, okay, anyway, strongly recommend it. It's called Oh Hello, Nick Kroll and John Mulaney as Gil Faison and George St. Geeglin. 92nd Street Y interview. Personally, one of my favorite go-tos, if I just want to put something on in the background, that's a video that I usually, I usually play. It's pretty great. Check it out. And also on Netflix, their their show is good. Oh, hello is what it's called. I hope they do another one. That would be awesome. All right. Um, well, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. I've had my I've had my coffee break. We're going to talk about a news story first. Um, news articles can be a great way to learn English because the way that news articles are written often introduce something you haven't seen before because it's about new stuff that's going on, right? Unless you really follow that topic very carefully, you're going to probably get something you haven't seen. And that's a great way to expand your language horizons. So I would recommend finding news stories that you are interested in and then reading through the whole thing. Try to get the general picture. Try to understand generally what this news article is about. Again, pick something you are interested in. If it's boring to you, it's going to be very tough to learn. So read through it, get the main ideas, then go back a second time and pick out a few words and phrases. The reason that I strongly recommend not doing that the first time is that you want the whole context of kind of what it's about. Because if you don't have that context, it's hard to know where to place those words and phrases if you're doing that the first time that you read through it, right? Also, if you're going through and you're just looking at new words and phrases and defining them and looking them up in the dictionary, it's easy to get bored, quite honestly. It's easy to sort of say, all right, well, enough of this. I'm going to go do something else. But if you've kind of had a little win, a little achievement, ah, I understand this article. I read the whole thing. I did it. Then as a follow-up activity, it's pretty easy to quickly go through and pick out some words. Do not try to learn every single word. Definitely. It's much better to pick out a few things that are new. And when you do, look at them in context. Look at the whole sentence. If you need to look up the word, go ahead and do that. But always bring it back to the sentence, to the context. How is it used? Why is it being used here? And then if you want to, if you want to practice it, make your own sentence, including that word. So you're getting in the habit of actually using what you learn. Okay, 
Those are the steps for news. Let's now spend a little time going through an article about a rocket launch. In this case, going to the moon. Okay, we're going to look through it. We're going to not do what I said because I want to, in the interest of time, just pick out interesting words and phrases as we go along. Again, when you do it on your own, read it twice. Okay, first generally and the next time to learn new words and phrases. So here we go. Artemis NASA readies giant moon rocket for maiden flight. Now, I would have capitalized Reddy's giant rocket maiden and flight. And I'm wondering why those were not capitalized here. But I guess I can't complain. All right. So here we go. There's a picture of the rocket. Artemis is the name. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. Okay, here we go. Um, the American Space Agency, NASA, has rolled out its giant new moon rocket to prepare for a maiden flight. Now, as I said, we're going to be looking at the words and phrases as we go the first time in the interest of time. So let's say rolled out. Rolled out. Something like unveil, show, reveal, something like that. Rolled out. In this case, maybe literally rolling it out because it's on wheels. But to roll something out is to show it to the public, to reveal it in some way. It's giant new moon rocket to prepare for a maiden flight. This is an old word. It has almost gone completely out of use, but it's still used for flights, sometimes voyages. The Titanic sank on its maiden voyage. It's the first journey, the first voyage, the first flight of something. You'll still see that in the news and in announcements. However, maiden has another usage about women, which is no longer used. Known as the Space Launch System, SLS, the vehicle was moved to Pad 39B at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida ahead of the expected liftoff on the 29th of August. Notice here that you don't actually read 29 August. It's a weird way to say it. You can write it in a lot of different ways, but when it's actually read out loud, Typically, it's going to be either August 29th or the 29th of August. Generally, that's it. So it's an interesting thing. Sometimes when you're reading something, what comes out of your mouth is not exactly what you see. If I read what I saw, it would be 29 August. That's odd phrasing. I like to write as it's, as it's spoken. So I would have written August 29th, probably with a TH after the 29. But you have to sort of translate it in your head as you read out loud. The debut outing is a test with no crew aboard, but future missions will send astronauts back to the lunar surface for the first time in over 50 years. Now, debut outing. Why are they saying this instead of maiden flight? We've already established maiden flight. Why not use it again? For the sake of avoiding repetition. Repetition is not necessarily a good thing. Well, this is great because now we can learn another way to say the same thing. The debut outing, same as maiden flight in this case. Great. Debut, first thing. Outing, kind of odd, right? But it means to go out. So it, it works. I think it's a little bit strange in this case. Debut is a very common word. The first one. Often it's used for music in relation to artists and albums, their debut album, their debut solo, for example, is a test with no crew on board, but future missions will send astronauts back to the lunar surface. Now, lunar, you will see in relation to the moon, but does lunar mean moon? 
Lunar is the adjective of moon. So you could say either the moon or the lunar something. Surface is one. Maybe the lunar atmosphere or the lunar magnetic poles or something like that. Lunar is going to be the word we use when we want to turn the moon into an adjective. Lunar eclipse, for example. The near 100 meter tall, 200 and, or 328 feet SLS, rode an immense tractor to the pad. It started moving from its assembly building at Kennedy just before 2200. That is how you would read that. 2200. If it's military time or 24 hour time, 2200 on Tuesday local time and had completed the 6.7 kilometer or 4.2 mile journey uh, by just after sunrise on Wednesday morning. Well, that's pretty slow. That thing is pretty slow. Do we have a picture of the the big uh, thing? There's a platform that it sits on. I guess not. The platform that it sits on and it rides on that to the launch pad. Or maybe it is the launch pad. Uh, I can't see the wheels there. Okay, moving on. It's a picture of a fake astronaut, maybe? No humans are aboard, but sensor-laden mannequins will record conditions during the mission. Sensor-laden, sensors detect conditions, and mannequins are things that look like people, like crash dummies for cars, mannequins in shops, shopping centers, for example, wearing clothes. Mannequins slowly turn their heads when you're in supermarkets at night or shopping centers at night if you're in a department store at night with a bunch of mannequins they will one of them will slowly turn its head guaranteed this is a key moment for nasa which will celebrate in december the half century anniversary of apollo 17 the very last human landing on the moon to celebrate something you can use this for so many different things it's not just to talk about the activity of having fun is to talk about important events or dates. Celebrate an anniversary. To celebrate a monumental occasion. To celebrate something is not always about what you're doing, throwing a party and having uh, uh, horns and confetti. It's also about the fact that this is an important date and we're doing something to remember this important date. In this case, 50 years since Apollo 17, which is insane. How have we not been back to the moon since Apollo 17? That is so ridiculous. The agency, the agency has vowed to return with its new Artemis program using technology that befits the modern era. Artemis was a Greek god Apollo's twin sister and goddess of the moon. Yes, this I knew. Um... There's a great book by Stephen Fry called Mythos and one called Heroes, part of a series, and I believe one called Troy. And he narrates the books and they're, it's about the Greek gods and their origin stories and uh, the heroes and their stories. It's really well done. Anyway, beside the point, Artemis is in there. Uh, key moment, important moment. Key often means important and is a great replacement as a synonym for important. Vow means promise or guarantee, but it's more like an emotional thing. I vow is a sincere promise that you make to a family member. I vow is a sincere promise that you make uh, to a husband or wife on your wedding day. Those are called your vows. So to put it in this sort of context suggests that NASA is not just casually making a promise, Oh, yeah, we'll send people back to the moon. No, no, no. It's a vow. It makes it sound more serious, like they're very dedicated to, uh, to sending people back to the moon. NASA sees a return to the moon as a way to prepare to go to Mars with astronauts sometime in the 2030s or soon after. Did I say go to Mars? Yeah. The SLS will have 15% more thrust off the pad than Apollo's Saturn V rockets. So the Saturn V rockets, part of the Apollo program, are the ones that initially went to the moon. When they talk about thrust, thrust just means 
pushing something or how much strength something has when it is being pushed. When we talk about rockets going up into space, the amount of energy they have as they go because the flames are pointing down, that is the thrust that they have. So how much thrust is how basically how powerful the engine is that pushes the rock the rocket upward. And then off the pad, the pad is the word that's used to talk about launching rockets. You have a pad that you might sit on to stay comfortable on the floor. We also have a launch pad. Launch pad is used for much more than just rockets, but it does come from rockets. The idea of a rocket sitting on a launch pad is the idea of something with a lot of potential getting ready to go up into space, right? So yeah, of course, rockets, they they shoot off of the launch pad and in, into space. Or your company that you just started is on the launch pad, or this thing was a launch pad for my business. It gives us this feeling of it being a rocket and this thing I was sitting on before that allowed me to go upward. So if something is a launch pad, it's a, it's a thing that helps something go upward or provide support that allows something to increase or grow very quickly. Often things like startup companies, launch pad is a very, very common, a very, very common word. Okay, the extra power combined with further enhancements will allow the vehicle to not only send astronauts far beyond Earth, but additionally, so much equipment and cargo that those crews could stay away for extended periods. Ah, Mars colony, maybe. Here's a graphic with the space shuttle, Falcon Heavy, SLS, Saturn V. This is the one, the second one is the one that went to the moon. And this is the one that SpaceX is working on launching to Mars. The crew capsule uh, also is a step up in capability called Orion. It is much more spacious, being a meter wider at five meters than the historic command module of the 1960s and 70s. A meter wider? Uh, is that, I mean, is that, uh, it still doesn't seem very big to me, but... Okay, whatever. What do I know? Now we have a quote A quote here. To all of us that gaze up, gazing up is sort of looking wistfully with thoughts behind your eyeballs, not just staring at. It's different than staring. It's not just the action of your eyes. It's not just what your eyes are pointed at. Staring, looking, perceiving. Yeah, those are fine. But gazing, it's, there's more behind it. It's more mystery or maybe more thoughts happening. There's a person doing it and having an experience as they're doing it. We get more when we say the word gaze. To gaze at someone is to be in an emotional condition of some kind. To all of us that gaze up at the moon, dreaming of the day, humankind returns to the lunar, lunar surface. Folks, we're here. We are going back, and that journey, our journey, begins with Artemis I, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. The first crewed launch, Artemis II, is two years away from now in 2024. We're hoping that the first landing, Artemis III, will be in 2025, he told BBC News. That means we're going to the moon in 2025. Too slow. Should be sooner. Whatever. NASA has promised that the third mission will witness the first woman to put her boots down on the moon's surface. Here's the SLS rocket. Very nice. Very cool. Love it. Once the SLS arrives at its launch pad, engineers will have just over a week and a half to get the vehicle ready for flight. Three possible launch opportunities exist at the end of the month, starting Monday, August 29th. If technical issues or inclement weather, inclement weather means bad weather, weather that's not good or not ideal. That's another way to say simply bad weather. Sounds a little bit more formal. If technical issues or inclement weather prevent the rocket from getting off Earth on this date, a further attempt can be made on Friday, September 2nd, and failing that on Monday, September 5th. The scope of the mission, and if you hear the word scope, it's sort of 
the size of it, the scale of it, how big it is, what it includes. If you're at work and you talk about the scope of a project, this is what the project includes, the scope of your responsibilities. What do your responsibilities include? This is the scope. The scope of the mission is to send Orion looping around the back of the moon before bringing it home for a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean off California. Splash means it's going to land in the water. A major objective of the test flight is to check the heat shield on the caps. Check that. Hmm? Oh, okay. A major objective of the test flight is to check the heat shield on the capsule can. I, I feel like the word the should be there or that should be there. That the whatever. That the heat shield on the cap uh, on the capsule can survive the heat of reentry into Earth's atmosphere. So the two ways to use atmosphere. One meaning of atmosphere is the environment around you. Ooh, this restaurant has a nice atmosphere. I love the atmosphere in this area. Or the atmosphere being the layer of air between us sitting on the Earth and space, our atmosphere. We're getting there. A key partner in the upcoming mission is Europe. It is providing the propulsion, that's a, the pushing part, the fire, the flamey bit, the propulsion module that sits on the back of Orion, pushing it through space. Propulsion means pushing or moving forward, uh, pushing forward. More than 10 countries in Europe have been working on this European Space Agency, uh, ESA, contribution. It's a hugely important moment for us, explained Cian Cleaver from aerospace manufacturer Airbus. The European service module is, that's the, the uh, ESM? The European service module is not just a payload. It's not just a piece of equipment. It's a really critical element because Orion can't get to the moon without us. Oh, good. Good job, you guys. Great job. Europe hopes its contribution to this and future SLS Orion missions will eventually see a European national, a European national get to the part of a lunar. This sentence is a little weird. Europe hopes its contribution to this and future SLS Orion missions will eventually see a European person, national, get to be part of a lunar service crew at some point. Wow, that's quite a sentence. Study that sentence. Okay, it's kind of it's a little hard to read through the first time. For now, it will have to cheer on the British animated character Sean the Sheep, a puppet used in the stop motion TV films has been placed in the Orion capsule, capsule complete with an ESA badge and union flag on its overalls. Ah, Shaun the Sheep. I've seen Shaun the Sheep in tea commercials, I think, right? Tea commercials? Ah, yeah, very familiar. While NASA is developing the SLS, the American rocket entrepreneur Elon Musk is preparing an even larger vehicle at his R&D facility in Texas. R&D means research and development. So usually big companies will have a department in the company where they do just research and development and they find new stuff, explore new stuff. And to develop something is to work on it, to build it, to add to it, to improve it, to come up with something new. We're developing something we're very excited about, not just for technical stuff, lots of different stuff. He calls his giant rocket the Starship, and it will play a role in future Artemis missions by linking up with Orion to get astro astronauts down to the surface of the moon. Oh, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. So Starship and Orion will work together. Like SLS, Starship has yet to have a maiden flight. Unlike SLS, Starship has been designed to be totally reusable and ought therefore to be considerably cheaper to operate. Uh, reusable means you can you can use it again and again, like a an airplane. A recent assessment from the Office of Inspector General, which audits, uh, audits means to look into something and check it carefully, make sure everything is 
as it should be a review process of some kind. Audits NASA programs found that the first four SLS miss missions would each cost more than $4 billion to execute. Execute, again, an interesting word with different meanings. Execute means to kill somebody. Execution would be to give someone the death penalty, right? He was executed in the middle of the street. Oh, that's horrific. But execute also means to take an action on something, to do an action that you plan to do. Let's execute on this. And not only to do it, but to do it correctly, to do it as planned. Who is going to execute on this? Or you hear the noun form execution. Ideas are great, but the most important thing is execution. That means carrying out the idea, carrying out the plan very well. And if you can carry out the plan very well, you can execute on your plan, which is usually a good thing, always a good thing. Well, I can say most of the time, executing on something is a good thing. But when we use the word execution, in this sense, it's usually a positive. Okay. Uh, the agency said changes made to the way it, uh, oh, the, the, the agency said changes made to the way it contracts industry would be, would, well, well, my brain. The agency said changes to the way contracts industry would bring down future production costs significantly. Significantly means a lot. Sean the sheep will ride around the moon. There you have it. Kind of a sudden ending to the article, but there it is. Pretty interesting. So hopefully you got a few, at least a, f a better context of a few phrases. Uh, if you are using news stories as a way to work on your English, the key thing is to not overwhelm yourself by getting bored. So choose interesting topics and make sure you understand kind of what it's about before you go through it. Again, we didn't do that in the interest of time. That would be my very strong recommendation. And don't worry about defining every single word. Pick out between 8 and 12 words per article, words or phrases per article. And that should be enough to not get overwhelmed and continue with the exercise of learning from the news. Okay. Wow. Still have some people here. I thought everyone would leave during the news bit. You're still here. What? I did the news last because my thinking was, all right, everyone's going to be bored by the news, right? News is boring. I think it's interesting, but. All right, folks, it's time. I'm hungry. I'm, uh, my throat's getting a bit scratchy. I'm going to go and eat some lunch. It's 3.30 p.m. I haven't eaten anything yet, so I'm pretty hungry. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for the great questions. I appreciate it. If I didn't answer your question, get that ready for Friday. We'll be doing another one of these on Friday. Every Wednesday and Friday, we do live streams around 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That is around 5 p.m. GMT. I think it's 5 p.m. GMT. So see you back here on Friday. If you haven't done so already, would appreciate if you could hit the like button subscribe and feel free to get a free course in the first link in the description. You can check out the other links if you want to really get serious about your English and start improving uh, fluency and comprehension, comprehension and pronunciation and grammar and all of that stuff. I have lots of courses, so feel free to check those out. And I hope you all have a great day. Bye, everybody. Take care. Have a good one.